constructive in this yeah. regard. In March of 2008, crude was $70. By July, it was 147. By November, it had fallen to 30. By the next March, it was back at 70. That's an extraordinary roller coaster to put a $17 trillion economy through. 70 to 147 to 30 to 70. Now, no one, no one with a straight face, Representative Moran, could look at you in the eye and tell you that's India, that's China. We had some extraordinary weather event. No, we didn't. There was some interference in the marketplace that was posing such an extraordinary circumstance that it needed to go to 147 by July. No, no, I'm sorry, that didn't happen either. So it could only be market manipulation. Well, what other consequences could there possibly have been? Because in terms of pure and supply demand fundamentals, they did not exist. What, would, what could possibly be the supply and demand fundamentals? It would be almost as though someone were to say to you, everyone in China and India decided to drive their car in, in July, that drove it up, and then they parked their cars by the fall, and that's why it went down. I mean, truly, <laughs> it's absurd. Now, with respect to your, your question about, about profits, first of all, every single day that you hear a report on the news about what happens on the commodity markets, every single day, by that evening, for publication the next morning, the commodity market movements get translated into what happens on the physical markets, the wholesale prices that our people pay. They follow almost in lockstep. So there is no question that what goes on on Wall Street has a direct causal effect on ultimately what is made by virtue of what is charged to the general public and the price of the products that they pay. It's absolutely the case. There is a direct causal uh, relationship between the commodity markets and the prices charged in the physical markets. We watch them every day. And, and the absurdity of some of this you know, shouldn't be lost on anyone, and I'll, I'll pick on heating oil again. We just came through a heating oil season where we had virtually no winter, right? Representative Markey, we had no winter up home. None of the golf courses were open all, all winter long. It was extraordinary. The measurement of cold that we use, which are degree days, was down by 25%. The volumes that were sold by your heating oil retailers were down by a third. Extraordinary. I mean, an extraordinary weather event. Then why, under those circumstances, would the commodity cost of heating oil today be three dollars and twenty-two cents? You can't give away heating oil. You can't. It was seventy degrees in most of February, for God's sakes. Now we're talking about a crack spread. The difference between the price of a barrel of crude and the price of a barrel of heating oil. The price of a barrel of crude is one hundred and four. The price of a barrel of heating oil is 135. Now, why would there be such a huge premium for a product that no one's using because it's 70 degrees? It defies logic for anyone to say it's supply and demand. And to your point, Representative Markey, in the remarks that you made uh, in your opening statement, for the first time since Harry Truman was president, the United States has become a net exporter of refined petroleum products. Extraordinary. Most people think that we're a net importer of everything. Our crude imports are under 50%, and we make so much of the refined products that we use that we have enough of it to export to foreign markets. And the heating oil commodity cost is $3.22 in a season with no winter. And the price of a gallon of gasoline on the gasoline contract on the NYMEX has gone up 92 cents between the middle of December and the end of March at a time when Americans last year reduced their consumption of gasoline two and a half percent and have reduced it by an amount more than at any time since World War II just over the last three years in the economic contraction. If there is anything that underscores what Professor Greenberger has said today about what the actions that you should take in these markets, it is that the fundamentals of supply and demand do not seem to count. Americans have sacrificed they have sacrificed, and they're not getting the benefit of it. Compelling insight. Thank you.